Hi everyone, I've been playing around with um, an effect to age copper and I've been using this um, sheet of copper on a roll and I've just cut some pieces off. Each of them's been embossed with a embossing folder so I've got two that use the Cuddlebug folders and one that use the um, Tim Holtz texture fades as well. And I treated these in various different ways with salt and vinegar to see what the effect would be. So the first piece here has quite a mottled effect on it. Um, you've got some areas of bright copper and then some areas that are quite a, a dark green um, verdigris look to it. And what I did with this one, I got the piece of copper, I didn't sand it or anything like that, which um, some places recommend you do, but you obviously don't need to do that. Um, I dipped it in a salt solution, which was half a pint of water and two tablespoons of salt so I dipped it in, shook off the excess and then I laid this just on a, a saucer and sprinkled on some vinegar in a similar way to how you would sprinkle it on your food and as you can see the areas where the vinegar hit have quite a nice green um, verdigris appearance um, some of it is quite sort of gritty looking as well and the areas where the vinegar didn't hit have remained a really bright copper so that's quite a good way to do it if you want um, that kind of mottled effect. The second piece here um, this was done slightly differently and it's got a, a more creamy green effect not as dark as this one um, but more even so you can see the difference in the the different greens there this is quite a lot lighter and the copper is also a different colour on here and um, this piece is much darker than this one where it remains true to the original bright copper colour. So this piece was left overnight in a solution, again which was um, half a pint of water, two tablespoons of just regular table salt and it also had um, a tablespoon of vinegar added to it which originally I thought that would be enough to get the patina effect um, however it needs air for the chemical reaction so what happened, I left it overnight and all it did was to lighten the copper um, and that was it, there was nothing else. So I took it out of the solution in the morning and I covered most of it with vinegar. Um, so I put it in a little box and then put quite a lot of vinegar in there. But I also, um, once I'd covered it all, sort of gave it a little shake so that the excess would come off and leave areas exposed to air to ensure that chemical reaction would start. So that's a, a more even green effect, um, less mottled than the first one and it's got a nice creamy green. There's still the, the sort of speckling on there where it's a little bit gritty. Um, but I quite like that and it's got the darker copper. On the underside you'll see this was sat in the, the vinegar and it wasn't being exposed to air so this side has not coloured as much. There's little areas that have coloured. Obviously as the vinegar was drying out then these areas were getting exposed to air but virtually no verdigris effect on there compared to the front. So that was the second sample. Then the third one um, I wanted to see if you could get that effect but without leaving the copper overnight. Um, so this one was in a salt solution. Again half a pint of water, two tablespoons of regular table salt and it was left in there just for about 20 minutes half an hour and then I took it out and did exactly the same as the second sample I put vinegar all over it shook off the excess so some parts were exposed to air and then I kept re-dipping it in the vinegar <coughs> um, and it resulted in a really deep green um, copper effect uh, verdigris effect rather much deeper um, than sorry the second sample which you can see the, the difference there um, but there are some lighter areas too so it's as dark as the first sample but the copper's changed colour we've not got the bright effect of the copper and it's more even than the first sample as well so they're the th three different things that I did I think this one's probably the quickest and easiest um, dip it in the salt solution, leave it 20 minutes take it out um, cover it with vinegar, sort of shake off the excess and then leave it exposed to air um, that's very very easy to do so what I'm going to do now is to make these into some projects and I will get back to you so these are the two projects that I made with the aged copper the first piece I made into a tag and it's got a Tim Holtz ornate plate in the centre and some Dymo tape 
which says spread your wings and then some more dymo tape just with numbers and then the tag top is also dymo tape um, which was put onto grunge paper and then stapled um, there's some wings which are the Tim Holtz wings and I added texture paste and then they were coloured with rub and buff in Spanish copper as was the ornate plate, the little aluminium roses as well um, and the dymo then at the bottom there is um, industrial chic charm um, which Arlene gave me, thanks Arlene and a polymer clay key so that was the first piece the second one I made into a small picture so for this one I have the fleur de -lis, um, patinaed copper and I used a polymer clay crown and then I cut um, a frame out of polymer clay stamped into it and then coloured it the same way as the, the crown with um, perfect pearls in gold so that was the second piece that I did so I was quite pleased with how they came out um, things that I did learn whilst I was doing the projects the patina does come off a little bit I added um, some spray fixative to it which helped a little bit and if you're trying to glue things onto it then you really need to sand that surface in the area that you're going to glue embellishments down otherwise the patina just flakes off and there's nothing for the adhesive to hold on to um, so I hope you like those and I hope you give the um, aged metal a try okay thanks for watching bye